Okay, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the um, Naples Mac Friends User Group meeting on Wednesday. Today is a very, very special meeting. And I'm just skipping 100% set up here. The, um, today we're going to hear about the history of Mug, Naples Mug. And it's got a long history, an exciting history. And in front of us today, we have the following uh, folks. We have uh, Martin Riff, who's the, who was the first president of the, uh, of the Naples Mac user group. Here's a picture of him um, from yesterday. <laughs> and he has his lovely wife sitting next to him, Marsha. And um, next to Marsha is the original secretary of the group. <laughs> Ruth Anderson, who is still remains an active member in our group. We celebrated Ruth's 100th birthday last year. She will not have another big celebration, she says, until she's 105. And then, so plan on it, put it on your calendar, because she'll, she'll be there, don't worry about it. And then next to Ruth, it's Jim Stewart. Jim, your wife's name is Marilyn? Mary. 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 Okay. And Mary Stewart. Jim was the original original treasurer. And as a matter of fact, uh, Gene just came in. Gene, were you the treasurer after Jim? No. That was a lady. Lynn Day was. Okay. So he came, uh, Gene came later. Okay. And, um, <laughs> and then uh, next to, um, I think we, uh, actually we had a surprise today. I tried to reach him. Duke Bassey? <laughs> Jerry, what was Duke? Or Duke, what were you? I'm sorry, what? What was Duke? He was, he was the second president of the club. Oh, the second president. Yeah. Okay. You, you know, George, we, we need to go back a little bit. Uh, this club actually goes back to 1974. Oh, and, uh, when well, that's we, when we were born. <laughs> <laughs> and and when, we, when we came here, George, uh, a fellow by the name of Demarest, was trying to run the library, and he'd been given some Macintosh computers. And the Apple II folks were disbanded. So there was an interim period where a couple of us got together and we set up the network in this library. Well, after that, Marilyn Mathis came in and she was uh, a big supporter. But interestingly enough, we met in Ruth's house with a fellow by the name of Alex Hart. And Alex and Rosie Hart funded the first newsletter for uh, Martin and uh, our first Martin, our first newsletter basically was on lightning rods. Please don't let the lightning strike your house. But uh, Alex Hart funded that, and then basically we uh, we we kind of came together, and under Martin, uh, the organization formed at that point. But uh, to be very truthful, the nine years, the short nine years that I was the uh, president, had been eclipsed. <laughs> who, who actually leveraged the outfit into what we have today. And, and that was real active internet. Because when we first started, uh, can I tell one story? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was also one of the founders of the Naples Freenet. And uh, Jerry Manning, who was a very diehard um, Windows guy, set up this thing at the Telford Center. 
and, uh, and they were all set uh, to put the Freenet for the first time on the system. Well, Martin had written the PPP instructions for our communication system. And I had this old Mac SE in the trunk of my car. And when I realized they couldn't get their Windows machine on the internet, I went out to the car, logged in my Mac, plugged it in. We had a 300 baud modem. And it went quick, quick, quick away. And we were on the internet for the Naples Freenet. And Naples Freenet didn't get one Windows computer on there until September. And it was basically through the efforts of Martin and his work with the little thing known as the PPP, and that we were able to go around and help everyone in the room get on the free net. What year was that? 1994. All right, what I want to do now, uh, just to make you guys familiar, well, first of all, to introduce Jerry, who was like Uch, I was the previous, the previous president of the May, and uh, what was it, 17 years? No. <laughs> 22. 22. 40, 47 years. No. <laughs> <laughs> about, about 15. And it seemed like it was dog years. <laughs> dog years. Uh, what? Dog years. Oh, dog years is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, just to introduce, uh, to these guys, us, I'm the president of the group today, George Rubin, Don Peacock. Where are you? Don Peacock is the treasurer. Eckert. Eckert is our um, registrar. registrar for our classes. Our <coughs> classes uh, is the biggest fundraising that we do. And this was a uh, uh, from uh, a fundraising point of view, a pretty good year for us, and we moved from uh, Hodges to the uh, Naples, what do we call that place? Conference Mark? Center. Conference Center. Hmm? Conference Center. Yeah, Naples Conference Center. Maryland. Maryland is our, uh, what we call our member advocate, but she also uh, is in charge of all of the uh, material and the, and the class, the, what makes up all of our classes. And plus, uh, we now have a, another meeting that we deal with on a monthly basis, uh, on, a, on a, the second Monday of every month, where we uh, uh, have then made a deal with the library. We get free room and board, and we do a meeting for the library now, uh, the second Monday of every month for uh, anybody that signs up through the library that needs help. And it's almost a one-on-one -on -one type of a meeting, primarily on the uh, iPhone and the iPad. I mean, you guys had it easy because you were only dealing with the computer. We're dealing with the iPhone, the iPad, Apple TV. Watch. Watch. Oh, yes, watch. Wow. Um, cloud. Cloud. Yeah, cloud. cloud. So, you know, you guys really had an easy job. <laughs> I mean, this is, you know, I mean, we have to be super intelligent human beings now. So, um, and I'm sure you guys were. Marsha is our secretary. And um, she's doing a great job, but she's only part-time. So we've, uh, we have some board members that are, I guess one is part-time. Uh, did I miss anybody? Well, you sure did. Eckhart Conrad. has taken over a great deal of what the treasurer does because now, thanks to uh, oh, Conrad. the fact that we can now collect dues by PayPal online on the website, and Eckhart handles all of the online payments and makes sure that they get into our online database. So it's not that he just works during class season. Really, he does. No, he's busy. He's busy 12 months of the year. I appreciate the 10 percent commission. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and he also uh, travels back and back and forth to Germany for a few months. So uh, he's a busy guy. 
and he's also been very instrumental in uh, setting up the new facility for our classes, which is just spectacular. You guys are certainly invited. Well, the, the stewards have been there already, I believe. They were, they were at Hodges, I know. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were at, weren't you at our new facility? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought that's why I saw you guys once. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Conrad is the newest member of our board, and uh, he's sort of in charge of recruiting new members. Um, he and Eckert are working on a project uh, called Zoom, where we're trying to figure out a way uh, to broadcast our meetings to all of our members that are up north, so they can see our meetings uh, actually uh, at the exact time that they're going on. And we've also um, determined that there might be an opportunity, because many, 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 many MAC groups are closing their doors. The Detroit MAC group just closed their doors. And we actually have two members from their group who have joined our group, and, and they stay in touch with us remotely through the discussion group, and uh, I have done videos uh, practically of every Wednesday meeting, um, and we, we, we make those available. So there's a lot of information you can get out of this, this group without physically being at a meeting. So, uh, and we think that there's an opportunity. I think Jerry has said that the largest Mac user group in the world is out of Dubai, yes. and they have no building. They're only on the internet, and they got like you know thousands and thousands and thousands of members. So, uh, so therefore, one of the things we want to talk about is we need you guys all back. <laughs> <laughs> so you're here today to be elected. <laughs> well, every, George, everybody at the table is a, is an active member. Okay. We pay our dues. <laughs> and, they pay their, and they pay their dues. All right, well then, there will be no problem electing them. <laughs> so we'll take care of the election at the end of the meeting. Uh, Conrad, um, anyway, he's involved in the Zoom, and, um, and uh, we're also dealing right now with the library. Um, we've had some issues with the library over the last year or so, with one day it works and one day it doesn't work, and we've had a portable projector, and we had to go out and purchase our own projector, and uh, just so that we had the reliability of a projector. Uh, but now they're going to spend some big bucks and really put a state-of-the-art uh, room together here for us and for you know the rest of the people that utilize this room, uh, comparable to the uh, library on Orange Blossom. So if you've been in that room, the, the equipment in here will be very similar to that equipment. So we're talking about the uh, big bucks. And Conrad is involved in that whole process also. So everybody's very, all of our board members are very, very active. We have no, no board member that doesn't uh, really have a job uh, for the group. And it's a very active board. We meet about uh, seven times a year now. Okay, the first, uh, I think Martin has put together some information that uh, he's going to let us know about. Okay. So it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to read some of these things and then I'm going to be talking about some, some of the others. Uh, if you don't hear me, uh, tell me and I'll try to call Clara. Don't have that much anymore. In January, when George Rubin, your president, emailed me and Dennis Vasey uh, and asked if either of us had any any uh, stuff about the history of the club, uh, I said yes because I had a bag of well, it's a large envelope of stuff, and I didn't really know what was in them uh, in in the stuff. So I said yes. I, I, well, I looked, and I found in here uh, Mac user 
reports. Dating uh, 1994, 19, and, and almost, this is all stuff, all of that. And it covers the following topics you might be interested in. Uh, in big boys toys, a matter of ethics, electricity, system management, inside your Mac, WordPerfect 3.0, music with your Mac, AOL 2.5, addressing envelopes, and mail merge. Do we have mail merge? I don't know. Uh, uh, creating data CDs, and when you have, when you, uh, when and how to use your discussion groups. And there's some miscellaneous stuff. Uh, these are yours. Thank you. <laughs> I'll make a copy of it and send it back to you. <laughs> okay. uh, now I'm going to be reading and, and talking at the same time. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for having me here. And, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, well, okay, I'll start, I'll better start this way. Uh, a, um, at one point, uh, in January, let's see, oh, at one point, I went on the club website, which I hadn't been in early on in terms of, I hadn't been, I hadn't, I hadn't looked, I hadn't looked. So I went on the website, and guess what I found? I found a description of the beginning of the club that I had written. <laughs> it's called A Little History, and it's all, it's all there. Uh, yeah. In 1992, uh, when I arrived in Naples with Marsha, uh, uh, lugging my first Mac, uh, I was happy to discover Robert Demarest was here. And he was the director of the library. And uh, he, had, he had, had a Mac, he had a Mac. And, and people from all around would come to the library and with, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, him and talk and do all kinds of things. Was very very good. Uh, a, uh, let's see what else. And, uh, and uh, let's see, you know, there, there, there was a small room. I thought that room might be might be the because it was in the same place. We we, we didn't change. But uh, 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 Demarest was an enthusiastic Mac player. Uh, Mac, Mac, and he was very good and. Uh, he was, and we had, he had a group of people with him, uh, and they began, but he unfortunately took a job someplace else, and we lost him. And so the group <coughs> got gathered together, there were a number of people, and uh, we gathered together and we joined, made a club. And it was, that's, uh, that's how it started. Uh, we, uh, let's see. They, rather than disbanding the MAC discussion group, uh, wanted to continue to meet. Uh, and so in September 1993, we decided to form a MAC user group. Uh, the first, you know, they, I was elected the first president. Uh, Ruth Anderson, right here, was, was the secretary. And, uh, and Jim Stewart, the treasurer, Jim, yeah, he was the treasurer. Uh, and uh, let's see. In the months that followed, uh, in, in, in February, Hainsworth, uh, Melody Hainsworth, uh, instructor in the New International College, uh, a demonstration. They, they, she demonstrated a, a, a community internet service, and. The inter Naples Freenet was formed then, then and uh, it still exists, by the way. Uh, and in fact, Jim Wacy, Wacy, Dennis, aren't you still on the board? No, I stepped out. You uh, stepped out. He was I did on that the board for about twenty years. Yeah. <laughs> very, very good. The, uh, 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 the uh, Naples Freenet. Uh, I, I produced some some stuff so they could get onto the Freenet. And uh, 
freedom, it still exists. I put, have a website on that, and uh, pretty good. Let's see what else uh, in October, etc., etc., etc. Let's see. Uh, they they covered that. So yeah, that, that, you look at everything else. And then I have mentioned, mentioned Jerry King, who was pleased. Uh, you might mention about that when they they had the International College. Which I gather where you've been doing your classes now. No, we do them. We did them there for you years. We did for years. Yeah. Yes. But that place was, uh, if you know where 41 and Bayshore is, an yeah. old shopping center. Yeah. And you wouldn't think that they had a second floor in that yeah. building, but that's where their classes started. And Ruth said she went to one of the classes there, you said they were yeah, there. And, um, so they've, they've come a long way also. So now they have this huge, beautiful campus up north. Uh, so that's but where they started and now, and with the, the free net and all, and we were very involved with all that and going, especially with trying to get the, the members to join the, the MAC group. Martin and I were going around to all the stores leaving information and trying to drum up customers for the Mac. Lots of fun. Well, you can start doing that again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now an escalator. We had an escalator. And that now point. it's, uh, how many years later? 20? A lot of years later. A lot of years later. I, I met Martin on the beach. I used to walk yeah, I know that. the beach every day from... I remember. <laughs> Her and her husband on the beach. On the beach. Yeah. Used to walk from 102nd Street to the pier every day. And I, I talked to people. And I met Martin, and he told me about Mug. Is that, is that and that's how I got it. And her daughter, yes, works with Apple. Worked with Apple. My daughter worked for Apple. Yeah, it worked for yeah. Did we look her up when we visited the Apples? Oh, no, no, no. Actually, uh, Karen, her daughter, has made a couple presentations to our group right. while she, when she's been in town. And I think, uh, I think she's a member currently. Yes, she is. Yeah. Uh, Ruth, are you all done? Yeah. Uh, no. Did you, did you want to say something, Martin? No, all I wanted to say is I've tried to come to meetings, I guess, every week, but I fell and broke my hip. Yeah, but that was over a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, before that, I came to meetings right. every week, and I know most of you people, and it's a wonderful group. Well, thank you. And. Uh, we, we, uh, Mitch has always volunteered to pick you up. Or go yes. nice. Yeah, go nice. Whenever you call me. Well, you know, the technology has increased so that sometimes I don't understand some of the things at the meetings. Join the club. Oh. <laughs> Join the club. <laughs> That's why you need to come. <laughs> But I plug, plug along of my own. I talk to my daughter on Facebook every night, so she knows I'm still alive and kicking. <laughs> and I've made some good friends here. Jim, did you want to say a few words at all? Uh, the only thing I'd like to say is my uh, brother in uh, California, when I was there, he showed me the first uh, Apple computer and I bought one and obviously it was not much more than just a box <laughs> and uh, but I thought that was an interesting situation okay see anything else Barry well the only claim to fame I can think of is I think we had the first meeting in our house that's right. That's the only thing I can remember. And actually, Ruth was the one who reminded me of that. Did you serve refreshments? Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Mm -hmm. Okay, who's sitting next to Mary? Duke. You know, Kay and Trey were our librarians. And, uh, who was the librarian? Just, uh, there were a lot of things that were taking place. Our logo uh, came from uh, Phil Tedder's. Uh, Phil was a graphic artist. Yeah, Phil Tedder's. And, uh, yeah. And, and one day, uh, Phil said, you guys don't have any identity. I, I said, Phil, we have a Macintosh. He said, you guys don't have any identity. So I said, OK, why don't you come up with one? So he came up with the logo. I don't know if you still use it. But yes. No, no. No, it's a different one. Yeah. Different one? Yeah. The original logo had Naples Pier on it and had a sun on it. Oh, and uh, we were horribly pleased with it because it was the first time that we were able to integrate without fancy software. We are using Claris Works. Yes. Now, Claris Works is, 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 it still is, if you could actually find something to run it, it would still be a wonderful program. And Nancy Dykes, bless her soul, gave instructions to everyone. And we did it at yes. the original International I went to her College. Classes. On the, on the second floor, and she had some wonderful friends who helped her just put these presentations on. And one time I was called in to give a guest presentation because I understood how to use the Claris Works database. And when I got through, she looked at me, and of course, you had to know Nancy to really recognize the power of, of small people. <laughs> and Nancy said, I bet you there's no one that came to that class that can actually do it. So I said, well, do I get a chance to come back? She said, I'm not sure. <laughs> but when you look at uh, the simple tools that we started with, think about a 300 baud modem. We went to 2800 baud modem. Then we went to 5600 uh, baud modems. And of course today, if you, if you don't have fast broadband, 5G or 4G or 4L, whatever they are, you almost can't do anything. Marveling at, after Ruth told me we were going to meet, I happened to notice in a box I have, my first Apple iPod actually can play two songs. <laughs> and it's a huge uh, device. And, and I thought to myself, this thing was built in 1996. I wonder if it still works. I charged it up, and that's the best song I've ever heard. <laughs> Waylon Jennings, and it cost me about $400. <laughs> if, if anyone is interested, I have a piece of history at home. But just so you know, I noticed on the internet the other day that a Mac Plus sold for $28,000. Wow. It was still in the original box. So uh, my wife, uh, since we moved, has made me get rid of all of the documents like Martin just showed you. George, I don't think he wants a copy back. <laughs> if you do have a copy, make it electronic so that you get the PDF. I'll try to have a PDF. Yeah. Yeah. But, but as, as, I, as I look at the, the interest and the enthusiasm uh, today, and I recognize that talking to my family in Ireland, I could turn on Messenger on a portal, and in the room in the house, it will follow me around for 150 feet, keep me in perspective, and I'm talking to a person in Ireland who can see everything I'm doing, and I can see everything they're doing. And the cost of that technology, $99. So as we look at how the things changed, I think the important part of what the Mug Group gave to everyone in town was an opportunity to understand how to use their computer. And we recognized very quickly that not everyone wanted to use all parts of the computer. Some were happy writing notes, others were happy even making it work so they could get on the internet, and then others did some fabulous work. Sue Squires put together our newsletter. And in that newsletter, <coughs> she did everything big publishing companies would do. I mean, it was fantastic. 
Bill Carlson was our first designer. Yeah, really Unfortunately, Bill uh, died very early, uh, without, not because of our group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happens with Matt. <laughs> Things come quickly. You just don't know when they're going to happen. So, uh, as I as I look at, uh, at at each one, each one is a story. It, it's really a story of, uh, of organizing. And I remember Andy uh, when we were having our first meeting in your kitchen. Yeah. Andy looked at me and says, "I'm going to read the support page." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we've uh, we went over to your house. <laughs> uh, we were. Uh, where did, uh, what, did you guys have meetings? Yeah, in this room. No, but years ago, every single week? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And, and it was a, a stand-up about this time, and we would, we would come in here and we had uh, a logo, and we would hook it up to a, 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 a view graph starting off, and then we invested in a projector. And uh, we took that thing all over the place. And, uh, K and F would pass out libraries, and people would uh, get very active about about the computer because there wasn't really any servicing of those computers here at all. In my study, I could rebuild anything. So if you call me up and said my Mac doesn't work, I could take you a Mac or I could go fix your old broken Mac because people were just giving those computers away. They were being obsoleted so quickly. We went from the Mac to the Mac Plus to the Mac SE. Then we got into these little small uh, bubble computers. And then there were performers. And Carol Glassman showed up one day with a brand new computer from Staples. And they didn't even have any so uh, software for it. So I went back to the guy at uh, the place says, where's the software? He said, you know, th they brought the performance. That's what you get. That's why it only costs $409. I thought, well, I guess. And, and fortunately for us, Apple didn't have a license for software in those days. So we actually could create software, bring it up to date, put it on a computer, and you could go home and use your computer. And if you couldn't, you call us up, and we came to your house and helped you uh, get into the system. So that kind of thing today, Jerry actually elevated it to something reasonable, because <laughs> the internet was going so quickly, and a lot of the things that we were doing did take face to face, but more things required to be done on the internet. As that tool became more available, uh, every home that had Comcast could get on the internet. I know the first day I went over, I looked at this guy's computer and I said, where's your modem? He said, just plug it in. So I plugged in this wire, and my goodness, that thing was galloping along. I thought, I'm getting one of those. <laughs> you know. However, Janet, my wife, uh, she said, Maybe later. <laughs> She's but, a finance manager. Yeah. <laughs> you, you think Jim was tough with the buck. You should see my wife. <laughs> you know, the Treasury wants to help her give, yeah. Some of it. But the, the focus that this group had under Martin and I think uh, under Jerry was education. And, and from my point of view, that's the only thing we can really do today with, with computers is help people understand how to make them fit them into their life, not become a part of it, but fit them in to help them where it counts. That's true. That's true. Uh, let's open the meeting for any questions from the uh, from the audience. Yes. Um, I I just wanted to uh, when you said international college down on uh, East Naples. That brought back a memory that I went there, and I don't know whether I went for the internet or why I went there, but I had a, I came with a computer. I had been using Apple computers since 1984, so I was interested in getting some help. Um, but I did want to mention a couple things. Uh, Nancy Dykes uh, was uh, a very uh, amazing person. Um, she had a very strong personality, to say the least. <laughs> so <it was. laughs> to say the least. But she, um, I remember her coming to meeting after meeting and uh, making copies of software on the, on the little, on the black disks that we used then and sharing that with people on a regular basis. 
uh, and she was very, um, sometimes if you would ask her for help, you'd get kind of a short answer, but bottom line, she was helping everybody, and she was offering software to people, and um, you know, she did, a, she did a lot educationally for this group. And then I have to mention um, Duke or Dennis, whichever you like, um, he had a garage full of parts, and he lived in my neighborhood, and um, he had supplied me with many uh, parts for my computer and advice and help over the years. Um, so uh, I just, uh, you know, for those of you who are relatively new, uh, these two people were very key when I first started getting involved in this group many years ago. Uh, that I remember affecting my use in my life. I'm not uh, sure I understand. <laughs> <laughs> serious <laughs> talking to me. <laughs> um, and everything that I've learned, either I taught myself or I learned from this group uh, about uh, Apple, whatever. Any other questions? Comments? Right. Down yeah, on the original logo, Duke, was that, that was Bob Kennedy's photo of the no. figure, wasn't it? No, this, oh. this is, was a sun, sun <coughs> on the ocean, I think. George Nichols. George Nichols. Yeah, Alfred Nichols. Yeah, it was not from the Bob's picture. Yeah, George Nichols. And there was one before it. Yeah. So that, they're talking about the one, the, the original one, I guess. On the pier. Mine was with the pier. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah. But that was not the original one, right? Uh, there was something before it. There was not a photograph. Early before that. Okay. Uh, let, me say, let me say a few words. Not, not as well as do, but uh, I, I do want to say, Get up and say, say people. I, I joined the uh, club probably in 1998, and I was number 518. And in those days, we assigned membership uh, numbers sequentially, so I was the 518th member of the club. And I came in here, and Duke, is up, Duke used to be up on the, on the platform doing his presentations. And Nancy was at the projector, and he would be saying things, and she would she had to figure out where he was going <laughs> to get to get that on the screen so we could see what he was talking about. She was uh, multifaceted to say the to say the least. You know, Duke, Duke was highly organized. Not. <laughs> I. Uh, I'm. I'm <clears throat> Faye and Kay, I want to mention that. Education was always important. <clears throat> Back then, the club used to buy uh, VHS tapes from Mac Academy. And that was our education program. Kay would, and Faye would roll in a suitcase full of the uh, VHSs sit in the back and then you would sign up and you would get an education video for a week. And that was, we had a revolving library that was the key part of our education program. <clears throat> Great stuff. The uh, newsletter was put together by Sue Squire, who used to write a lot. We published, I think, 10 issues of the year the law work. And we mailed them to everybody. That was the, the distribution benefit. And a lot of the problems we had with our club database is because we had to mail stuff to either here or Ohio or Delaware or here or uh, Illinois, depending upon where the people live. <clears throat> I want to mention uh, my good friend, Gene O'Mara was the treasurer after Linde. We had Jim, Linde, J. 
Gene and now Doc. And uh, he's number 23 in the, in the interview sequence. Sue Squires, who's not here today, but she's still watching, she's still taking classes. Uh, she's number 13. So it used to be that we kind of had a history of when somebody joined the club based upon their user group number. And I'll sit down. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you very much. I, uh, Hi, George. Go I, ahead. I remember George saying he came to a Macintosh meeting, sat at the back of the room. He didn't know anything about computers or Apple or anything, and look at him now. <laughs> <laughs> I think he knows more than most of us. No, no, no. no. But, um, and actually the reason I, it's, it's, the reason I sat at the back of the room at the time, I was going through, uh, a, I had tongue cancer, and I was going through radiation, and I could not talk. And, and uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't talk. It was impossible for me to talk. So I, had a, I sat as far back as I could, and I actually did not have a Mac, but I was intending to buy a Mac because I, I had just gotten married, and my wife's... Um, son, my stepson, uh, said what, what you need for what you want to do, because I, did vi I, wanted, I was doing video editing on a PC, which was an impossible thing to do. He says, you need a Mac. Anyway, so as, as I got my, my radiation came to an end, and as my voice came back, I started to move up to the front of the room. <laughs> and then as soon as I got to the second row, uh, somebody said, would you consider being on the board? <laughs> and uh, that's how it all began. Uh, there's a fun movie uh, that I thought I'd show that I think everybody would enjoy. Um, Jim had a comment. Jim. Um, Jim Korsica. I was a career math teacher, and the one thing I want to say about Apple and that can never be taken away from Apple, no matter how big it gets and no matter how many and areas we built on it. criticized for, is that Apple was first into the schools. Mm -hmm. And they supported the schools long before IBM even had a microcomputer. Now, unfortunately, what happened with the PCs is they priced it so low that public school systems, when they were going out to buy computers, would, would buy the cheapest, cheapest one around, and that's how PC sort of took over in the schools. But Apple was supporting education in the late 70s. I bought the first Apple II. I didn't buy it. My school bought the first Apple II in 1976. It had 16K of memory. The external memory was a cassette recorder, and the monitor was an RCA Victor small screen TV with an RF modulator, $2,500. But Apple always was first in education, and, and a couple of folks touched on uh, education. Mr. Stewart mentioned Bob Demarest. I believe he went to community school. And because he was the library, librarian at community school when I started there in 96. Okay, Do any of you remember AppleSoft Basic, where you had to actually type in the program? They had a magazine that you buy every month and you type in your own program. You remember that? If, if, if I can continue on <laughs> education. I, I was uh, the superintendent of uh, the Department of Defense schools, and uh, one of the local businessmen came to me. And he said, uh, I think you need to have computers in the school. So I, I went to the superintendent and uh, I said, what do you think about computers? She said, yeah, they're never going to amount to anything. <laughs> so, and, and it wasn't age either. It's just that she wasn't interested. In, uh, because she thought we were going to take some of the budget money away and the roof looked more appealing than the, than the computers. So Apple 
came into our school at uh, Fort Rucker, Alabama, and uh, uh, they did that in, in 1978. And we set up a room just like this with 20 computers. And we opened the computers up to the community because that's really what a school is all about. Within four months, we had to keep the school open until midnight every day so that they could get their computer time in. Kids were coming in from Troy State University using it. The local attorneys were using it to write briefs. The kid down the block was running his business out of the, out of the uh, gymnasium where we finally moved the uh, computers to. And we were writing our own programs in those days because you just couldn't buy anything. But the wonder, most wonderful thing was the gift that Martin gave us when he wrote the PPP instruction so that we could actually put a Macintosh in the Telford Center in public view, this little bitty machine and this little small hookup modem, just plugged it in the wall, dialed the number, it went and there we were on the big screen. We were on the internet. The very first internet that, that the Melody Hainsworth could have passed out. Yeah, she actually could have had something bad happen to her. But, but the truth of the matter is that Apple is education. And everyone who's ever dealt with one has come away having benefited a great deal. And I think, uh, I think a lot about Microsoft. Uh, I think a lot about all of the things that they're doing, but the thing I think about is tomorrow, and uh, I have a good friend, uh, a Lonsman, who thinks the same way. What about tomorrow? Uh, and not about yesterday, but where are we going for tomorrow? And I think if we'll all get behind these, uh, uh, this, this device, we'll find out that it's a natural part of communicating, and it, and it can be used for extremely good purposes. Yes. Yeah, uh, not to keep you from running your film. No, that's okay. <laughs> but I wanted to add uh, to what Jim said, um, and this is a little history from Florida. Uh, I was in education, and that's actually how I got started, because as an administrator, I was offered a free computer. And then I got so excited about it that I bought my own at home to teach myself, because I didn't have time at work to learn how to do it. And uh, so that's how I got started. But I, uh, prior to that, and I can't tell you the year, I was at a major meeting in Miami of educators. And this gentleman got up and spoke. He was the poet laureate of Florida. And um, he was starting to talk about how computers were going to be the future of education and that they were going to help us in the classroom and children were going to be learning on the computers. And I was appalled. <laughs> Because I thought, I don't want kids, I want kids to be, you know, the teachers to be in charge. I don't want computers to be in charge. And everything that that man said, and I wish I could remember his name, um, everything that he said has come true about computers in education. Um, but that was the first time I had heard of it. And, uh, of course, I've changed my view since that time. But um, that was an interesting introduction to educators in Florida. Mary? I just wanted to say that I went to graduate school in business in 1973, and I went to one of the top schools, University of Chicago, and we still didn't have computers. So I've been like a little kid trying to catch up over all those years, and look how far we've come. That was 1973. Well, you wouldn't have had a microcomputer in 1973. We didn't have that. We were writing pieces by hand, reading oh, books. It was old school. Yes, right. My first experience with a computer was at Community College, um, taking a class and um, in word processing on a PC using DOS. And I remember our teacher, which was really cool, saying, you have to think like a computer, and I didn't even know what that meant. <laughs> and her favorite word was Mundo Bizarro. You know, because it's this it's this world in the you know the, that we don't know about yet. And I just loved it. So I like, I took two classes and um, then I inherited my brother's Mac Mac um, not Mac, but um, in, in Mac 
Not even a MacBook. Um, the big one. He was a yeah. Apple. Apple two. What Apple? Two Apple's or Mac? PowerBook. PowerBook. From yeah, he was a photographer in LA and a red carpet photographer, and all of his images were on this computer, and he passed away. So it's like, well, I got to find out more about my brother. So I took the computer back, and in fact, he came to one of our meetings before he passed away, and uh, that's when I started getting to the Mac. Mm. Still don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> Don? Yeah, two things for Duke. Uh, yeah, my first experience with the, well, not with the Mac, but with the Naples FreeNet was uh, in 76. I, I took a job overseas and I said, well, I better learn to, uh, uh, you know, connect to the internet and all that. And the FreeNet had a class, it was down in Marco Island, and I drove down there and I remember the guy hooking up and he says, look, I went to school in Maine. And here I'm going to dial in, you know, HTTP, yeah, yeah, and it connected, and it showed the live streaming. Oh well, no, it showed pictures, not that, but you know, he said, "Here's my university, and uh, we're connected up here to Maine. And if I wanted to talk to somebody, I could do it right here on the computer." And I thought that was pretty neat. And, uh, but why does the FreeNet not support that, really? Uh, only in a minor extent. Do they support anything other than PCs? You have to get the right person there if you're going That's for help. True. Well, for years now, it it, uh, it it got to the point where Macintosh was so far ahead of Windows as far as hookups uh, that nobody was calling the Freenet uh, and asking questions about how do you get on the internet with a Mac. I mean. Uh, when we got this uh, store at Waterside, uh, I think 10 years ago, that was a big plus for us because we used to have to go up to Fort Myers. In fact, right now, we're trying to get the building done. We still, we still have to go up to Fort Myers. But, but the folks at Fort Myers were so helpful that if you got a map from them, you got on the internet. You went home, your modem was ready to go, and you were, you were hooked up. But uh, for the for the 20 years that I was on the Freenet board, I probably never had six questions about hooking up a Macintosh. And, and the reason I didn't have them was because most of the Mac users would come here, and before they went home at that day, they were on the internet. Uh, it wasn't true with Windows. Windows, we had a heck of a time. And it wasn't until about 1984 when Bergen, uh, Paulie Hack took over, that Windows actually started to make sense uh, for the free net. Uh, I'm not sure Windows makes sense to this day, but, <laughs> but nonetheless, it, it's one of the operating systems out there. But if you're smart, you'll buy a Chromebook and, and just be done with it if you want to go somewhere else. Anyway, um, was there another question? Yeah, um, you talked about water side. Has anybody heard when they're going to over? Nobody over knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. They, they can't get, uh, there was an article in the paper this week about Just that. Just a couple of days ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nobody knows and they can't get word out of California. And uh, uh, I would, I would, I would estimate it probably won't be until next year, 2020. But to talk about Microsoft and Apple, but I think you'll enjoy this, uh, this short video. George, before you start it. Um, I was in the Apple store before I closed, just before I closed, and there was a fellow in there who had worked in the Chicago store, and that's where I came from. The Chicago store was one of the two biggest in the country, and this fellow said that ours is going to be as good as the Chicago store. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It's going to look very much like the Chicago store. And we built in a technology in the Mac OS X mail called Adaptive Latent Semantic ana Analysis. Now, what is this? Uh, I don't know, but it works. And <laughs> basically, I click on this and I get a chance to prove myself up. And before I accept it, and I accept it here. Hi, <laughs> How are you doing? But this is what they're up to. Ball chair. 
Oh, light tunnel's really great when you want to sort of play God here. <laughs> and, uh, and so, I think we're going to just waste an awful lot of productivity here. <laughs> I actually looked at a... Uh at an Apple ad from 1978. It was a print ad that shows you how ancient it was. And, uh, and it said, thousands of people have discovered the Apple computer, thousands of people. <laughs> yes, and so we're getting a lot of input that people want this basic to be floating point. And like, we're begging laws, please, please make this floating point. Who's we? How many people are in Apple? Well, me. Yeah. <laughs> We're begging Waz to make this floating point, and he, he just never does it. You know, and he wrote it by hand on paper. And, and Steve called me up and said, "Don't worry about that negotiation with Gil and Emilio. Uh, uh, you can just talk to me now." And I said, "Wow." <laughs> Hi, I'm Steve, and welcome to my weekly podcast, Super Secret Apple Rumors, featuring the hottest rumors about our favorite company. I have some pretty good sources inside Apple, and this is what I'm hearing. The next iPod will be huge, an eight-pounder with a 10-inch screen. How do you look at yourselves in this landscape today? Because you, I mean, you, you are competitors uh, in certain ways, which we watch is the American way, we right? watch the commercials. And, and you get annoyed at each other from time to time. But you know what? Time. I have to confess, I like PC Guy better. Yeah, he's great. <laughs> I know. You know, the, the, art of those, the art of those commercials is not to be mean, but it's actually for the guys to like each other. <laughs> PC guy is PC guy is great. I, I like you. Not a big part. <laughs> and accessories for iPod. It's an incredibly thriving ecosystem. Uh, they announce products even before we want them to. Uh, so, in, in a few cases like the Zoom, that if you go over to that group, they think of Apple as a competitor. They love the fact that Apple's created a gigantic market. And they're going to try and come in and, and contribute something to that. That, uh, <laughs> and, and we love them because they're all customers. <laughs> <laughs> the early people getting their software ready for the introduction of, of Xbox 360. And we never ran an ad on that. <laughs> I see. Admirable restraint. I that is wonderful. There were hundreds of them. Steve is so known for his restraint. <laughs> Well, and an iPhone. And an iPhone. You have one? I do. Right here? Yes. Well, he has, but he took it out before. Um, what <laughs> is the iPhone? You need to tell me where the restroom is, too, because I'm deathly ill, actually, and ready to throw up at any moment. So. Well, I'm sure to curse the whole thing. No, I'm not joking. Uh, That's kind of like a sweater without sleeves is a vest. I don't get that. That was what they used to say about me when I was in my 20s. <laughs> okay. uh, it's got buying stolen property, it's got extortion, I'm sure there's sex in there somewhere. I'm about six months older than he is, but roughly the same age. And now, when we're working at our respective companies, I don't know about you, but I'm the oldest guy in the room most of the time. And um, that's why I love being here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And sometimes when we get rid of things like the floppy disk drive on the original iMac, people call us crazy. Uh, or at least premature, maybe. No, they call us crazy. Uh oh, okay. And, <laughs> and, and uh, now, voices. that's what a lot of customers pay us to do, is to try to make the best products we can. And if we succeed, they'll buy them. And if we don't, they won't. And it'll all work itself out. <laughs> so, you know, so far, I have to say that, that, that people seem to be liking iPads, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, we, we've sold one every three seconds since we launched it. Steve and Apple. Well, first time I want to clarify, I'm not fake Steve Jobs. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have to stop making me blind or I'm going to fall off the station. Like Bob <laughs> Thank you. Do you have any copies of the Photoshop Adobe ships every month? To millions! It's really hard to demo when your CEO is making faces on stage. <laughs> the back of this thing looks better than the front of the other guys, by the way. And these things are ugly. <laughs> and the winner of the first PowerBook is... Oh, 
Steve Jobs. No. <laughs> there I am. Hello, Mom? A company called Scalar has brought a USB microscope out to the map. It is phenomenal. It looks like something else, but it's really a microscope. Yeah, I know. And I have not had a chance to bring one of these home and play with it with my kids. I've got a little bug here. <laughs> All right. Well, that's why we have backup systems here. <laughs> Here's a third. Happy New Year. Now, these things make me slightly embarrassed to be a human. <laughs> we can do better than this. The new Power Mac G4s have the power to burn CDs, DVDs, oh yeah, and Pentiums too. So, so we're going to put flat display in the front. Who needs the back? There it is. The new iMac, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> And, and how much was the, I think you were telling us earlier? Oh, it was $31,000 that Apple paid you for, for the floating point basic. And I flew out to Apple, I spent two days there getting the cassette, the cassette tapes were the main ways that people stored things at the time, right? Uh, and, you know, that was fun. And so we were working together, the schedules were uncertain, the quality was uncertain, the price. When Steve first came up, it was going to be a lot cheaper computer. Uh, then it ended up being, but that was fine. Uh, <laughs> so we made this bet that the parent time shift would be uh, graphics interface, and particularly that the Macintosh would make that happen with 128K of memory, 22K of which was for the screen buffer, uh, 14K was for the operating system. So it was uh, 14K. Yeah. Yeah. 14K. Yeah. And we were actually negotiating a deal to invest and, and make some commitments and things with Gil Emilio. That's a very strange ads back then. We had one where it was in a kitchen, and there was a, a, a woman that looked like the wife, and she was typing recipes on the computer with the husband looking on approvingly in the back. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. We hired, we hired a, uh, a low-paid beta tester to beta test this app for an entire year. And here he is in the process. And this feature, a lot of people thought we would never add until this happened. <laughs> I mean, when I started in this business, the, one of the biggest challenges was people couldn't type. You know, and, and, and one day we realized that death would eventually take care of this. And <laughs> so we're introducing a revolutionary new product for your iPod. Sucks. <laughs> They're really cool, actually. You put your iPod in, and uh, they like that. They keep your iPod warm on the cold days. They protect it, and they, they give you a little more personality. I've got one right here in my pocket. It's not that I'm just happy to see it. And uh, <laughs> that's it. Longhorn. And uh, that's the days until Longhorn. Just count them down. But this, I have something to tell you. Mac OS X has been leading a secret double life for the past five years. See what stocks are doing well, we're down a little bit today. Well, we still got a lot more to go in Kenya, don't we? I don't know that there's ever been a slide that captures what Apple's about as much as this one. And who owns ABC? Disney. I know these guys. Most people, uh, I, some people here, but I don't think most people know that there was actually a, a, some Microsoft software in that Apple II computer. Do you want to talk about what happened there, or how that, how that occurred? The original Apple II Basic, the Integer Basic, uh, we had nothing to do with. But then there was a floating point one uh, where, uh, and I mostly worked with Waz on that. Uh, I made. I made well, I, let me tell this story. Okay. So Waz. <laughs> How are you? Oh, thank you for asking. Uh, well, I'm vertical <laughs> when it scrolls like butter. So. Up to 250,000 photos. Scrolls like butter. Wait a minute. And uh, I want to just highlight uh, one of the new places you can use your iPod. Well, you know what's a nice guy? He has saying, he said, um, Apple is like a ship with a hole in the bottom, leaking water. And my job is to get the ship pointed in the right direction. <laughs> Cards and letters from lots of people that say that iTunes is the, their favorite app on Windows. Actually, it's like a glass of ice water to somebody in hell.
quoted recently as saying if he didn't work for Microsoft, he would buy a Mac, and he's retiring soon, so I've alerted our Seattle stores to keep an eye out for him. And today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. And here it is. <laughs> We're going to use a stylus. No. no. Who wants a stylus? No, I would not. Um, What's the greatest misunderstanding, right? <laughs> thank you, Steve, um, about your relationship? I mean, you're obviously going to go down in history, as history books already said, kind of thing. But what's the greatest misunderstanding between you and your relationship and about e uh, each other? What would you say would be this idea of catfight, this idea of what, what, which one of the many? Well, we've kept our marriage secret for over a decade now. <laughs> <laughs> That trip to Canada. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> was, was that Yeah, I've got the results from last quarter. Revenue was, it, you know, I'll just wait and tell you when I see it first. You're welcome to do that. Here you go. Good morning. I'm Starbucks and how are you? Yes, I'd like to order 4,000 lattes to go, please. No, just kidding. Wrong number. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Clicker is not working. All right. They're scrambling backstage right now. That's what NBC calls. Well, oh, I just wanted to mention this. It is magical. I know it because I got this email. I was sitting in a cafe with my iPad, and it got a girl interested in me. The first one, an all-new design. Now, stop me if you've already seen this. You ain't seen it. You've got to see this thing in person. It is one of the most beautiful designs you've ever seen. Uh, you'll be able to buy this right on your phone for $4.99, if we approve it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you could help me out if you're on Wi-Fi, if you could just get off. And, uh, 200 apps every second. <laughs> There's another 200. I mean, we never saw ourselves in the platform war with Microsoft. And that's why we lost. <laughs> My sex, sex life is pretty good, you know. <laughs> How's yours? It's great. Thanks for asking. It's great. Yeah, don't ask. <laughs> why should I believe them? They're the ones that brought me mobile me. Thank you, folks. Thank you very much for coming. It was really an enjoyable meeting. It was great meeting all of you. Thank you. Thanks for everybody for coming.